Hi everyone, I was asked to do a video on how to make a foam sword. Um, today I'm going to be using, actually rebuilding my sword. Uh, you can see this is a piece of, uh, I believe this is the three quarter inch rattan that uh, uh, Master Eric sells. Um, I believe his is mastereric.com. Uh, I will look that up. Um, we are going to be using a piece of quarter inch uh, cross-linked poly, polypropylene. Um, this actually came from uh, Forged Foam. Um, uh, we have a number of friends there that have been helping us uh, make foam swords. They do it for the LARP group, so I wanted to get a foam sword that would last in our organization a little longer than what many of the, the foam combat kit sorts do right now. Uh, so we went there. They were able to help us out a little bit. Um, uh, they sold us some sheets. We use about half a sheet, uh, so uh, of a two by two sheet, we use about half for a sword. Um, the other things you will need, uh, I use just the standard uh, plastic basket hilt. You can use any basket hilt you want. Uh, if you're gonna be using this with kids, I would suggest a plastic basket hilt to keep it a little bit lighter. Um, of course, tape, uh, I put, just so you can get a feel for the layers, the idea is we will take the two-sided tape right here and use that, put some on the stick and some on the foam and roll it until we have a complete rolled covered sword. Uh, if you don't have two-sided tape, you can also use a Super 77, spray your sword and spray the, uh, the foam. Let it sit until it's tacky. Uh, don't, don't do it when it's brand new or wet because it won't hold as well. So uh, that method is a little harder because you sometimes you have to kind of keep it together. So I've used uh, tape just to keep it together while I dry. The two-sided tape is probably a little easier. Um, and then after you have that all together, believe it or not, they actually use box tape and they put the box tape around the sword in, in linear fashion. Everything here is in linear fashion, by the way. Um, so that uh, after you put that on, uh, it essentially covers the whole bla the whole foam piece and then you hit it with a heat gun and it actually pulls it, tightens it up and keeps it nice and solid. And then it's pretty much like an SCA sword. Um, we don't have to do spirals. I do put strapping tape linear again just to get add some durability and then add whatever color tape you want for edge, blade, and then your striking point. So um, those are the pieces that you're going to need uh, to essentially assemble a sword. You're going to want some extra foam to stuff your tip. Um, so when we're first going to do this, this, sword, this is going to, when you take a look at how this works, you want to leave enough room at the top of your sword when you're rolling this around to give you your thrusting tip to whatever size that you're going to, you know, that the, the, I use these for also kids buffer. So I make sure that it's legal for that as well. So I leave that size that we need. You're gonna roll it around and you're gonna use that extra foam to stuff that tip. Also, you'll use the foam. You're gonna use, you also have a pommel, uh, at least here in the mid realm, that you have to have the same size as the blade itself. Um, so these are the actual pieces that you'll need to start with. Um, the good part is uh, most of my sticks last, uh, the foam sticks last quite a while. Um, I use them on pals a lot. I use them on people. I actually fight uh, when my shoulders are bad or something. I fight with them because they're a little lighter. It takes stress off my shoulders. But we use them a lot for new, newer people so they, they, they can worry more about technique and less about being abused. So um, it's a great way to get people started and going and then build up to the weapons you need. Uh, the best part about a foam sword is that being lighter and using it to do drill work is that you're not stressing your joints nearly as much. I'll do 75% of my drill work with a foam sword and 25 with a rattan sword. That takes stress off my shoulders uh, and you can work uh, real drill stuff instead of worry about being tired out and doing all of that. So these are the pieces I'm gonna start assembling and as we go along, uh, I'll add some video to this so you can see the assembly process and anything special uh, so that you have a clear understanding of how it all goes together. Uh, one of the biggest issues I find, 
with these is the handle itself ends up a little small. Um, there's ways that you can change that. You can add tape. Uh, they also make a tennis tape that you can wrap. That's actually a foam tennis tape that, that provides some thickness. Um, I find that the standard uh, kids rattan uh, works pretty well. It's, it's, it's not terrible. It's a little round, a little small, but it's, it's not terribly off. But that's all up to you. Uh, lots of ways to go with the handle on that. But everything else is pretty fundamental to uh, uh, you know, building a, uh, adding the basket and so on are all pretty, pretty easy and can be done at home. So uh, we'll continue this in a few minutes. As all right, so here we're adding the basket up to the sword first. Um, usually what I do is I tape the, the basket hilt down just to hold it in place and then I will roll some strapping tape uh, and you can just in kind of inside out there's a number of different ways to do this on on uh, done this on rattan swords as well um, I've also done actually just uh, glue on the sword and rope uh, actually holds better than toast clamps so uh, but once you get that you're just gonna wrap it around. This becomes very hard to break because it's a roll and you just wrap it around like so. All the way around as you go. And then once you're done there, you'll add one more layer of, of strapping tape just to kind of cover it, make sure it doesn't come off. In this case, I didn't roll all the way, so I'm just gonna use the back end of this to keep it in place. And here we go, right here. So this is fundamentally keep it in place uh, and keep it tied to the sword a little better. Um, but that gives us our, our first shot at, uh, you know, having a good solid basket on the sword. All right, uh, you can see we did the two-sided tape. Uh, so this is all set. Now what we're gonna do, uh, it takes kind of two hands to roll this. So we're gonna go ahead and roll this all the way around the sword uh, and then uh, kind of hold it together and make sure it's nice and tight. Uh, and then after we're done, we'll trim this back side so it's also a little bit flat against the sword so we have a little bit more of a round shape. So let's go ahead and roll that. see here we're rolling it relatively tight and making sure that sticks all right and then if you look at the end we have that room that we're going to stuff stuff into uh, about as much as we need for, for uh, a kids fighting sword so that's safe and legal and this is the edge I'm talking about trimming uh, and in this case what we'll do is we'll just take a pair of scissors and kind of trim this down as we go um, all the way through this whole sword. So um, I'll finish this up and start the video again when we start putting the other tape on. All right, so you can see that uh, we did the trimming. The next piece is to fundamentally take the boxing tape. Uh, that's the clear tape that you put on boxes to keep them closed. Um, it's really not necessarily a tape that has a lot of strength to it, but you can see later we will show you how this works. And we're gonna make this nice and tight on here as we go down to keep that nice shape. And we're gonna take this and we're gonna do the same thing all the way around the sword. Um, you can see a uh, regular heat gun. Um, so what we uh, usually do here is we go ahead and just overlap it a little bit again, bring it down to the end. Uh, this tape doesn't normally cut well, but we're just overlapping, keeping it nice and tight. Well, one thing I mentioned, uh, it was good, uh, Sir Louis brought it up. Uh, in our kingdom, uh, the thrusting tape is about two and a half inches for kids' swords. 
you're not going to be using this for kids. I, uh, this is the part that actually oftentimes gets broken off because it flexes easy. Uh, so if you're not going to use it for kids, just overlap yourself about a about an inch. Um, that way you don't have as much open foam that flexes. Uh, so if you're using it just on pell work and other, um, you know, even other armored combat people, uh, you don't need that. So I would make that tip as minimum as you can. So once we get this all the way around, uh, what we end up doing is essentially applying heat all the way around the whole thing. This will actually act a lot like shrink tube and tighten up as, as we do that. Uh, and it will keep it a nice tight uh, kind of form around this. Uh, I tried to do that with uh, strapping tape. Uh, it tends to give, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't stay nice and tight. If you do strapping tape this way, what usually happens is it starts cutting into the foam and it breaks down much faster. Um, this is how uh, some of our foam people here uh, show how that, that they make their swords in their game so that uh, they can last longer. Uh, so far, so good in how I've seen durability of the sword. So uh, this is kind of the, the method we're using now. Um, there's lots of different ways to do these, but this is uh, what we're what we're doing now. A little extra tape doesn't necessarily hurt you here. Uh, I missed a little bit of a line on this side because it was a little too much. So um, this tape weighs next to nothing. The sword weighs next to nothing, so don't be afraid uh, to put too much tape on, like uh, or, you know, like we see what we do with our tan swords. And here we go. That should do us. So really the next piece is go ahead and use your heat gun on this. And we're gonna essentially tighten this whole sword up. Um, if you can see, um, this literally is tightening as I go here. Where you can see it kind of tightening on the uh, the foam. You can see I missed a little bit there. I'll probably put one more layer on and do this again. But uh, you can see a lot of the wrinkles kind of go away. Um, and we end up with a much sturdier foam. All right, so that's that part. Uh, I'll come back and show you uh, uh, the rest of it as we finish her up uh, so you can see uh, how this works. All right, so uh, so we kind of the end of uh, the sword making. Again, when you put the tape on, try to do everything linear. If you spiral it, it tends to dig into the foam and break the foam down faster. So everything's linear, uh, in, including the strapping tape I put underneath one layer of everything. Um, really doesn't matter if you want to put multiple layers on, probably add some durability to it and not much weight. Uh, you got to remember these swords weigh probably around 16 ounces. So there's, uh, there's not a lot of weight to them and that's fine. Um, so, uh, however you want to do that, I keep an extra kind of uh, foam piece. Uh, so if I'm fighting kids, I can put that foam piece on, just add some tape. So it keeps it in place to make this sword legal. Uh, to fight with uh, with the kids uh, when I'm not I usually pop it off because it just to me it gets in the way uh, But this is our sword pretty uh, pretty simple um, It's a pretty you know uh, the methods is relatively easy I use mine probably twice a week and get more than probably a month or two out of it um, uh, so they don't break down that fast uh, But it depends on what you use if you're gonna use and hit and fight and I do fight Full contact like SCA stuff with the foam um, so you will hit the shield edging or armor on opponents uh, it does break down a little faster then uh, probably the biggest pieces I usually get uh, cuts or bends in and splits uh, you can just take tape and wrap it around like I just told you not to but take tape wrap it around uh, for those until it just splits enough that you have to go ahead and peel this back off and add a 
you know, rebuild your sword. But as you see, it's not that difficult. Um, so good luck. Hopefully this, uh, this helps you. Uh, I use it as a great, it's a great training weapon. Uh, it's a credible one to go ahead. And if you have people show up at fight practices or new people, just hand it to them and let them go ahead and spar with people in armor. Um, this keeps uh, both people safe. Uh, and it's a light enough sword that uh, it's easier for them to swing. So, uh, and usually, uh, to tell you the truth, this is they really enjoy that part of the, the just come out and play type of scenario. So, let me know how it works. Uh, you guys, uh, you can get hit, hold of me on Facebook uh, under Bronis or Um Probably one of the only Bronises out there, a few of Bronises out there. Uh, or on Legio Draconis uh, a group. Uh, or... Probably the place where you originally got this, and that's our uh, SCA Coach's Corner, uh, where we do a lot of interviews and a lot of uh, talk about fighting, training, and coaching. So hopefully to see you soon. Hopefully we can cross sword soon, and uh, stay safe.